What I'd like to do now is I'd like to ask two of our member companies, one a new member and one a long-standing member, to come and talk about the impact of being a member of business in the community and all that entails. The first person that we're following is Leslie Matthews from Enterprise Enterprise. Hi there, good morning. Um, here are a few words so that I can stay on track. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Linda O'Sullivan personally from the ITC for inviting me to this event at the Guinness Storehouse in the West. It's always nice to be here. And certainly for allowing me an opportunity to speak on behalf of Enterprise Rex Park in Ireland. Uh, I've been with Enterprise for some 15 years now. Uh, which certainly makes me uh, fairly well versed on the subject and it's certainly probably something I can talk about for a very long time but I think I'm allowed about 10 minutes so I'm going to stay well within that time frame and hopefully I can share just a little bit of our, I think, wonderful story with you and our decision to partner recently with the business in the community. Um, when Jack Taylor opened the doors of his small leasing company back in 1957, he did so, it was called executive leasing at the time, he did so with just seven cars, one employee on his payroll, and a very simple philosophy. Take great care of your customers and your employees, and growth and profits will surely follow. Today, Enterprise Rent Car is part of the $15 billion Enterprise Holdings, with more than 70,000 employees, over 1 million vehicles on the road worldwide. In the Republic of Ireland, we currently operate just over 3,000 vehicles, with about 175 employees working in 22 locations throughout the country. And we are growing. <clears throat> I'm very proud to say that all of this makes Enterprise Holdings the largest car rental service provider in the world, measured by revenue, employees, and fleet. And still to this day, we have the pleasure of remaining a privately held company. We are still owned by the Taylor family in St. Louis, Missouri, who through tremendous leadership, heritage, have maintained an unwavering commitment to Jack's original philosophy that customer and employee satisfaction create the solid foundation necessary to build a successful business. But as a big company, we have even bigger responsibilities. It's not enough for us to be the best transportation service provider in the world. It's not enough to exceed our customers' expectations for service, quality, and value. And it's not enough to provide our employees with a great place to work, with limitless career opportunities. It is equally important that we serve our communities as a committed corporate citizen, that we identify and integrate into our daily operations a very simple yet powerful set of beliefs that every employee can understand and embrace. At Enterprise, we call these our Jack Taylor founding values, and they encompass eight distinct but equally important guiding principles. Our brand is the most valuable thing we own. Customer service is our way of life. We work hard and we reward hard work. Honesty and integrity are the foundations of our success. We strengthen our communities one neighborhood at a time. Enterprise is a fun and friendly place where teamwork rules. It's very American. Great things happen when we listen to our customers and to each other, and our doors are open. But it's one thing to articulate our founding values and another thing to ensure that we live them every single day. To do this, Enterprise launched the Jack Taylor Founding Values Award in 2003, which represents a strategic management initiative that challenges our teams worldwide to effectively integrate these values into their business planning and operations. A cultural compass, if you will, that essentially guides us in every aspect of our business. As you can see, uh, there are six key areas of focus which make up the enterprise cultural compass. Can everybody see that? Um, they begin with our operations. This is the true north on our cultural compass because we firmly believe that a well-managed well-balanced business is essential to being an effective community partner. Diversity and inclusion. We believe that understanding and embracing our differences will drive innovation and connect us more fully to our customers, our employees, 
and certainly our communities. Work-life quality. We, can, we constantly challenge our employees to be their best, helping them to achieve successful careers and supporting them in their efforts to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Business ethics. It's absolutely imperative that we display the highest standards of integrity in the day-to-day -day conduct of our business, which earns us the trust, the credibility, and customer loyalty we need to continue to build our brand and our marketplace. Public affairs and philanthropy. We work to develop strategic partnerships with our local communities, with influential organizations, and key government departments as another way to build our brand and our business. And last, but certainly not, certainly not least, environmental conservation. We are highly focused on ensuring that we make more efficient use of our natural resources and our financial resources, and that we continue to adopt better measures to reduce our environmental impact. So using this cultural compass as a guide, each operating group within Enterprise submits an annual entry that demonstrates how we have addressed these six key priorities within their operations. These entries have been judged by a multidisciplinary panel made up of our company's leadership. And the number of winners is limited only by their dedication and commitment to outstanding results. Since the Founding Values Award was launched in 2003, it has generated thousands of best practices, operating enhancements, and partnerships across our company. In the spring of this year, Driven by our desire to achieve excellence in these six key areas of focus, not to mention our strong competitive spirit, because I would be lying to you if I said that we didn't actually care about winning an award, Enterprise partnered with BITC, and I'm delighted to report that the experience thus far has exceeded our expectations. I am sure anyone here who has had the opportunity to partner strategically with BITC on an initiative uh, would agree that the personalized one-to-one -one service is second to none. For example, every month, myself, George O'Connor, Connor, who is our managing director, and other key stakeholders meet in what sometimes feels a little more like a war room to me than a boardroom, uh, where we hash out our goals, our strategy, our implementation, and even our progress year to date for each of the six core, core compass points for our uh, group submission. <laughs> Since partnering with the ITC, Linda and Sophia have made themselves available, often on very short notice, to personally attend those war room sessions. And I hope it hasn't been too traumatic for you at this point, Linda and Sophia. Um, as a result of their direct engagement and insight, I'm happy to say that we have adopted more creative and certainly more impactful initiatives within each of the six compass points, and we have simplified our strategies for a more realistic and certainly a more measurable approach. In addition to this dedicated service, which seems very tailor-made to fit our specific needs, Linda has provided us with various resources and, and contacts relevant to the specific compass points, which I personally feel have already begun to impact our progress towards excellence. Lastly, I think it would be remiss if I failed to mention the amazing community-related programs and networking events that we have been involved in since joining BITC. Uh, speaking from my own personal experience, having recently attended some of these events, I have found the topics covered are often highly relevant to enterprises' founding values and our cultural compass, particularly in relation to specific initiatives such as diversity and inclusion, philanthropy, and workplace quality, just to name a few. It is fantastic to have the opportunity to meet with other organizations within the BITC network to share ideas and exchange best practices. So as closing conclusion, I would like to once again thank BITC for the dedicated service and support that they have provided to Enterprise as we work to achieve the highest standard of excellence as a responsible and respected community partner in Ireland. asking our member companies to speak is that some of our companies use specific areas within business and community and we're trying to show you that there is, we have broad services. The next person to speak is a long-standing member of business and community and it is Carolyn O'Connor from Board Gosh Networks. Carolyn. Thank you. 
uh, the is just 10 minutes past as you can get on from work. Um, it was, I'd say, conceived on the Blarney Stone and in fact, I don't know anything about that, so you're, you're, you're blessed, really. Um, thank you very much to Business and the Community. I just want to first of all thank you for uh, facilitating this forum and many others which allows us to network and learn from each other. And also, I suppose, for inviting me uh, to be part of today and to share some of our story with you. So, just a little bit about who we are, because we often get confused with Port Cash Energy, which is part of Port Cash Energy Group, but it is uh, focused on the supply of them. So, um, Port Cash Energy, on behalf of Gasing, builds, operates, and maintains the natural gas network in Ireland and facilitates transportation services for all gas suppliers um, in Ireland. So, that's ESP, uh, Flow Gas. Um, Port Cash uh, Energy and uh, electricity, many others. And second, we connect all of the gas customers to the network. Uh, we manage a full 24 hour emergency response service dealing with about 20,000 uh, gas reported incidents per annum and with an average response time of 25 minutes. In the interest of sustainability, we are looking into areas to expand and utilize uh, the gas network even further. So we're looking into um, uh, new forms of transport fuel in the area of compressed natural gas, uh, looking at renewable gas as an alternative fuel source, and also uh, in providing uh, sustainable uh, innovations by means of smart metering and other forum. Um, we have world class infrastructure in Ireland, we have to know it's safe and reliable. Um, we have an interconnector system uh, from Scotland Mays and two pipelines and making sure that there is security supplies in Ireland to uh, a very robust uh, instrument uh, system that links Ireland with UK and international markets for gas supply. Uh, we've got two and a half thousand kilometres of transmission pipe in Ireland um, and about 11,000 of distribution. We serve 647,000 gas users for power generation, domestic or business use and we are in about 157 population centres, 19 counties in Ireland. So that's just a little bit about us, that's just to put us into context for you. So for a while we've been talking about getting strategic on sustainability. We have a very good reputation in their corporate responsibility. Um, definitely responsibility has been part of us from the very beginning, but getting strategic affords us an opportunity to expand the national number of ways. It allows us to nurture our tradition of responsibility and to build on our values, to stay true to them, to build on our CR promise. And ultimately, for us, building a strategy on sustainability was definitely focused on ensuring our business had the capacity to endure, hand in hand with being part of the solution to ensure that future generations could meet their needs. And all of that bundled together is probably about driving change and positive results, and it must be built on a triple bottom line basis to be sustainable in itself. We are very solid, well thought out, well adhered to values. Uh, there is safety, honesty, and integrity, performing, proactivity, and I can't sure the last one, empathy. And safety is our core value. And we've been tracking them from about 2008, and in line with the acceptance of our customers, you can see they've been growing. There was a dip in 2011 because of the nature of our business. When there is a massive price hike, we get hit as well, and we're all bundled into the board cash brand. So, you know, there is impact in that respect for us. That's just part of being part of the family, I suppose, really. So, uh, we saw sustainability as a wonderful opportunity for us to build on a number of things in our business. First of all, it was building on the recognized strengths and successes of our business. Also, I suppose, internally, it was looking at the support and enthusiasm that appeared to be within the business to make changes in line with the needs of where the company was going and the future would be for us. And also, I suppose, outside the business, it took into account that there seems to be a national requirement for business to take leadership role. We can't expect governments and agencies to do everything. And so more and more, we're seeing uh, through survey work, through interaction with stakeholders, that business really does have a great and valuable role to play in this context. So, to get strategic, how did we do it? What were the steps? So first of all, we looked at what we wanted to be as a business. Where were we going? How would our business context fit into the whole sustainability agenda? What would we get out of it? So that means recognizing value of sustainability, looking outside, seeing what others are doing. Um, we established a company vision, underpinned by a commitment to sustainability. We looked at developing a company strategy based on triple bottom line, like I mentioned earlier. And at the moment, we have a sustainability goal for 12 to 13, focusing on 50 action points. And the primary first step focus of that is to embed a culture of sustainability in our business. 
long term. The goal for us would be um, around looking at having sustainability as our sixth value when it is honestly and truly living and breathing in our business. So, uh, business and the community have been an absolute asset for our business. I, I, don't, I work with Jamina Eads practically every day, she's a new girl to me, and I never actually feel that I'm working with a consultant because she is truly, and, and as are all of our colleagues in business and community, very much a member of our team. Uh, they're no strangers to Port Gash, Port Gash Networks. Uh, most of them are known by our management team at this stage. And Elaine and Louise and Anne and other the other members have been very, very helpful to us in, in, in getting focused on being strategic. So, first of all, uh, we need to establish an existing, a baseline for existing CR performance. And we did that through the business working responsibly marked questionnaire process in 2011, which allowed us to gain gap analysis of our work. Uh, secondly, we need to look outside and see what other companies are doing. And uh, I find generally that the members uh, forum that I'm part of in, in Cork and Munster is wonderful in that respect because I can learn from others, I can learn from you guys. Um, but really, I suppose one of the key turning points for us is we held a workshop with our key internal stakeholders, and Jeremia and uh, Louise and Anne Hodge facilitated it was a very solid, robust session at that. And we had a very influential um, speaker at that. It was Mark Pendington, who's the head of corporate affairs at Anglia Motor. And Anglia Motor is truly a remarkable story. Um, they've completely remodeled their business, uh, focused completely on the strategic element of sustainability, capitalized on all the benefits, and they wrapped it around the strap and called um, the very drop. And that was personal for us because at the time we were making an application for the Irish Water Project. And as you know, Port has been successful. In that regard. So it really, really got the guys on board, got them fired up, got them thinking of, of the value for this. I wasn't alone anymore. Um, and then we looked at developing a plan and a vision. Again, Julina facilitated a workshop with our management team, locked into a room for a day, hammering out a sustainability strategy. And from that, we led on to developing our vision statement, which is currently just been finalised at Management TV meeting today. We got staff uh, to filter into that both, I suppose, in the context of being um, staff members, but also as representing um, stakeholder interests that, that, they, that they represent. And from that, we have now a strategic plan. Uh, it's focusing on building on our existing commitment. Um, it's primarily just around a, a sustainability program for 12 to 13, just to get us started, to get staff bought into it, to get our contractors bought into it. And from that, it will expand. Ultimately, for us, it's about gaining a new value, we're not going to stay for any timeline on that, but we're good and ready, and honestly can say that it's living and breathing the business. We're happy to come and the plane it. Um, and we will also participate, um, I envisage next year, again, in business working responsibly uh, questionnaire process, just to map and see where we come, see the progress we've made. And at least 2014 is really a point for the mark, so be prepared. Um, just moving a little bit along there. How do we do all of this? So, so you know, the why is very, very easy. You know, why do we get strategic about it? But how are we actually going to do that? Uh, communications are key. Effective communication, super effective, you know, gradually pushing the message out, be it internally or externally. The second kind of point for us is around our strategy map. So we work on a scorecard system, as I would so many of you do as well. So we filter in sustainability into our scorecard, drilling down into performance management, performance appraisal for the people that are driving the impact of what's happening in that program. The initiatives of the program itself will generate interest because we'll see changes. Things will start to change gradually. And every year we uh, refresh our staff on our values and our contractors. So that would be our call center agents, um, our field force, our construction partners. And um, so this year we started to introduce what sustainability is. Just starting to kind of enthuse and promote a little bit, giving a bit of understanding around it. And um, we're halfway through that process and I'm happy to say that it, it looks like they're actually getting it. It's not confusing anymore for them. That's our program for this year. It focuses on the five pillars of corporate responsibility. 50 goals, some of them ambitious, some of them very simple. We've often asked why didn't we do this earlier. Um, we've applied a progress measurement system to the whole program so that it will generate a portion of report for us back to the management team, either for our information or to show them successes or to get them on board again to kind of chase up a little bit and maybe um, draw more support from within the business. Um, 
domain will know this inside out because this took a lot of thought. That's the structure. Don't get bogged down with it. But it suffice to say that we've actually brought every element, every strand of the business into it. So our managing director, John Barry, is um, a very supporting project sponsor. I lead the project with our PMO. We've, we've actually um, got our, some of our senior management team in as pillar owners. We put ownership around the pillars because that was the only way that we could get action leads to take the commitment seriously. Um, but the guys in the middle, the champions, they're, they're, they're really the engine of the whole program. So it started to help them just looking at the actions that we have committed to, um, you know, monitoring, tracking, progressing. But as of late, and um, Stephen Stanley um, and happy for us to the session last week and they all heard that they want to take that even further. So the goal for them is about promoting, influencing, changing and we would anticipate that after the 12 13 program that they are the guys that will come up with the actions that we should be looking at. They will be setting the agenda because then we've got the feeling of the pulse in the business. And you see that I'm in there as well and I'm I look at the community because it's kind of close to my heart but I've started kind of learning to let go of it because you know once you like doing something it's hard to let go but in time to make sure that it does not and that somebody else can kind of pick it up and run with it somebody else will be pointed to that whole history. And um, that's just how, how it's structured, it's around program ownership, commitment to ownership, managing the program and again the champions are really key to it, changing our culture, setting new goals and tracking your successes. So um, that's just to give you an idea of some of the commitments in our program. In community, we do have very good um, engagement with our local communities. We would be the first to put our hands up and say we have great impact on communities, but where and how possible, we try to minimize that from our environment, the ecological element as much as we can, and then we're very good at supporting social issues. So that's really about a thousand volunteering groups, which is okay for a business of about 500 people. We're looking to grow that to 1500 for next year and beyond. Um, in a workplace, we, um, we have to form an athlete of a great place to work, but we don't get too bogged down in that. Our whole ambition is to always be felt, to feel like you're working in a great place to work. So um, we have commitment to our nurturing excellent diversity and being open and honest. Communications, yes, we will expand and develop our senior communication channels and skills. Um, I think a lot of the work for us to be done is getting our message out rather than you know, uh, the, the internal body. We need to start letting other people know what we're doing. The marketplace is an interesting one because at the moment we're um, we've just commenced um, a process around sustainable procurement. It's a tricky one to get your head around, but once you do, it really, really is invaluable. And Jarena has great knowledge in that regard, as do a lot of the, the guys that listen to the community. So Jarena has been coaxing me and teasing me for a long time to take that one seriously and grab the net by the throat and I'm, uh, I've done it really, really delighted. We're on the way. Um, we've partnered with all of our key contractors in driving sustainability through their chains because their guys are our people on the ground, so they need to feel what we feel and, and to kind of give up that sense of commitment. Um, as I said earlier, we've uh, a lot of research and development investment in renewable gas and CNG vehicles will be more and more um, obvious in transport fleet going forth and we're, we're key to that part and smart future is a good thing. Environment, as as you know, we are basically a business that transports fossil fuel. So we will never, I, I don't think we'll ever be carbon neutral, but that's, that's, that's not where our responsibility should stop. We will work at being environmentally responsible. We will look at carbon responsibility. We've uh, just um, installed an energy management system with ISO 14001 accreditation. We're going for uh, the introduction of an energy management system and for ISO 2001. So all of those structures around our environmental work. Um, internally, we're getting stacked to buy into you know, paperless office waste management and a lot of other things. So the culture is starting to grow, the culture is starting to change, people are starting to rethink. So um, just to close off, um, just in terms of who drives sustainability at Board Cash Networks. You know, a lot of people in the business, I suppose, a year or two years ago, said, oh, that's her, I'm her, talk to her about it. But now we're starting to see that people are actually starting to take responsibility to themselves. It's starting to change. And I didn't really believe that was ever possible in a seven stage organization. Uh, but with the wonderful health of business in the community, and with Jamie coaxing and helping me all along, and we, we started to change that. So definitely the workshop with our management team was, you know, things started to change from there on. So, John Barry really won't be happy with the fact that he's an actually can but anyway, and that's him and his guys. So they kind of set the scene for us, they set the theme. 
I try and influence them as much, much as possible and the years we've gone for the business of the champions. So I try and come back and make sure it's always on the agenda. The management team executives who are pillar owners and their action needs, whatever a program is, must be bought into it. They must, they must make sure that it's part of the action needs jobs. And generally, every employee in Board of Ashton was sufficient for us that they will own it, that they will join it. Um, and I would, I would expect that 12 months down the line, we'll be a little further on that and completing that jigsaw puzzle. But, you know, more best on the barrels, there's a long way to go. We don't have time frame on it, but, you know, it's best to say we're absolutely good.